Picture a Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Eight feet of muscle, two hearts, encased in ceramide armor. It's the ultimate power fantasy, but if you actually built this biological tank, would he dominate the battlefield or just collapse under his own weight? Today we're ranking 10 legendary super soldiers, not by their kill counts, but by a brutal ratio. Raw power versus scientific feasibility. We are looking at a 50 year horizon to separate the F tier biological disasters from the S tier engineering masterpieces. The results aren't what you expect. We have to start with the icons that completely break the laws of physics. At number 10, the Space Marine lands firmly in F tier. The lore claims they possess a black carapace and redundant organs, but biology is a crowded place. You can't just jam a second heart and a third lung into a human chest cavity without removing vital tissue. It's not redundancy, it's overcrowding that leads to immediate hydraulic failure. But the real killer is the square cube law. As you scale a human up, mass increases cubically while bone strength only increases squarely. An eight-foot soldier made of biological bone would suffer stress fractures just from standing up. Gravity is the ultimate enemy here. Unless you replace their entire skeleton with carbon nanotubes, a space marine is a structural impossibility. To power that mass, they need to eat constantly, making them a supply chain liability. They aren't sci-fi, they are fantasy statues. Number nine is Albert Wesker from Resident Evil. His power comes from the progenitor virus, which simulates aggressive retroviral gene therapy. In reality, viral vectors take months to alter a phenotype, but Wesker mutates in seconds. That's biologically impossible, but the physics are worse. It ignores the laws of conversion of mass. You can't sprout mass from nothing. Let's look at his super speed. To move faster than the human eye can track, your muscles need to contract with explosive force. That energy conversion produces massive waste heat. A human body has no mechanism to vent that thermal load instantly. If Wesker actually moved that fast, he would cook his internal organs before he finished the dash. He's D tier because without a liquid nitrogen cooling loop, he's a walking thermodynamics violation. At number eight, we have Geralt of Rivia. The Witcher's Trial of the Grasses is a crude medieval analog for extreme chemical conditioning and mutagenic therapy. Scientifically, this is the most grounded of the bottom tiers. We know that chemical cocktails can alter physiology. Just look at modern steroid regimens. Think of it as a survivable toxicity, similar to aggressive chemotherapy. His cat-like eyes, the tapetum lucidum, are a biologically valid adaptation found in nature. The issue here is in physics. It's military doctrine. The lore states that only three out of 10 boys survive the process. This is a catastrophic failure rate. You cannot build a sustainable army if your training regimen kills 70% of your recruits. Geralt is a D tier super soldier because while his biology works, the investment strategy is bankrupt. Number seven is going to upset a lot of people. Captain America is the absolute gold standard of super soldiers in fiction, the moral compass of the Marvel Universe. But if we look at the hard science, Steve Rogers is strictly C tier. We all know the origin story. A scrawny kid gets injected with a super soldier serum, blasted with vita rays, and steps out of the pod a foot taller and 100 pounds heavier. That iconic scene is a direct, flagrant violation of the law of conservation of mass. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. Injecting 50 millimeters of blue liquid cannot spontaneously generate 100 pounds of dense muscle tissue and bone mass. Then there are the vita rays. In the real world, the closest analog we have is myostatin inhibition. Myostatin is a protein that tells your muscles when to stop growing. If you block it, using gene therapy like folostatin, you can theoretically unlock uncapped muscle growth. We've seen this in mighty mice and certain breeds of cattle that look like bodybuilders. But here's the catch. That growth takes months, not seconds. Biology is slow. Cellular division has a speed limit. Accelerating it to the speed seen in the movies would likely result in systemic cancer rather than perfect pectorals. He is an S-tier symbol of hope, but C-tier science because he ignores the basic rules of metabolic timing and mass conservation. This is why number six, the Winter Soldier, ranks higher in B-tier. Bucky Barnes is essentially Captain America without the magic biology, relying instead on brutal practical engineering. His primary argument, the bionic arm, is surprisingly grounded in modern prosthetics. We are already doing this. 
It's called targeted muscle reinnervation, or TMR. Surgeons reroute the severed nerves from an amputated limb into the remaining chest or shoulder muscles. When the patient thinks close hand, the chest muscle twitches, sensors pick up the electrical signal, and the robotic hand closes. It's not telepathy, it's wiring. The other key technology here is osseo integration. You can't just strap a metal arm to a human stump. The torque of a super strength punch would rip it off the body, taking a chunk of shoulder with it. The metal needs to be anchored directly into the skeleton. We currently insert titanium rods into the marrow of amputees, allowing the bone to grow into the metal mesh, creating a unified structure. Bucky's arm is just an advanced, weaponized version of what you can find in a high-end rehabilitation clinic today. Even the brainwashing has a dark basis in reality. The conditioning Bucky undergoes mirrors the objectives of the CIA's MKUltra project and Pavlonian conditioning, breaking the mind to create a compliant trigger man. While his durability is exaggerated, a human spine can't support a metal arm lifting a car without reinforcing the column, the hardware integration is solid. He is a cyborg built on principles we already understand, making him far more feasible than a magic serum. Number 5 takes technology inside the bloodstream. Bloodshot is B-tier because he introduces the concept of vascular nanites. In the comics, billions of microscopic machines repair his tissue and enhance his strength. This sounds like pure sci-fi, but we are currently in the infancy of medical nanorobotics. Right now, researchers use DNA origami nanobots to deliver chemotherapy drugs directly to cancer cells. The principle of having machines in your blood is sound. The healing factor is where we have to be careful. As we discussed with Wesker, instant tissue regeneration creates lethal heat. However, Bloodshot's nanites could theoretically function as super platelets. Instead of regrowing an entire limb in seconds, they could mechanically seal wounds, stitch arteries, and form internal splints to stabilize broken bones instantly. It's a mechanical repair, not biological regrowth, which bypasses the metabolic cost of cell division. The hurdle keeping him out of A tier is power storage. To have billions of robots swimming in your blood, they need energy. Batteries are heavy and inefficient. Unless Bloodshot has a nuclear isotope in his chest, his nanites would run out of juice after one firefight. He is theoretically sound in function, but the energy density problem remains the missing link. At number 4, we have Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. You might think a clone belongs with the biological disasters, but Snake is surprisingly grounded. The Les Enfants Terribles project isn't about magic test tubes, it's about aggressive selective breeding. We already know that certain genes, like the ACTN3 variant, predispose humans to fast twitch muscle fiber development, while others regulate oxygen efficiency. Cloning a soldier to ensure they possess every single one of these optimal alleles is difficult, but it is 1990 science. We have cloned sheep, dogs, and monkeys. The fiction in Metal Gear is the idea of genetic memory. You can't clone close quarters combat skills. However, you can clone the neuroplasticity required to learn them faster. But the real reason Snake hits A tier isn't his birth, it's the SOP system. The system of the Patriots. In the lore, nanomachines inside the soldiers regulate pain, adrenaline, and emotion to suppress fear on the battlefield. This parallels real-world DARPA initiatives. Research into electronic prescriptions and vagus nerve stimulation aim to do exactly this. Regulate the body's autonomic response to trauma. Snake is the most grounded grunt on this list because his augmentations are purely regulatory. He is a peak human operating on the bleeding edge of pharmaceutical and cybernetic control. His only scientific deduction comes from the accelerated aging caused by short telomeres, a very fast, fatal flaw in mammalian cloning that ensures his service life is short. Number 3 pushes the concept of integration to its absolute limit. Motoku Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell the Major represents the full-body prosthesis, the logical endpoint of technology we saw in the Winter Soldier. Instead of replacing a limb, you replace everything, except the brain and spinal cord. The core technology here is the Brain Computer Interface, or BCI. Companies like Neuralink are currently developing the architecture to let a biological brain communicate wirelessly with digital devices. Kusanagi's cyber brain is just a high bandwidth version of this, allowing her to drive a mechanical chassis as if it were her own body. From an engineering standpoint, this is entirely solvable. The challenge is the ghost, the medical hurdle of keeping a disembodied brain alive. 
You need a perfectly regulated life support system to oxygenate the brain and scrub toxins without the help of a liver or kidneys. Furthermore, the brain requires constant sensory input to maintain sanity. Without the feedback of touch and proprioception, the mind disassociates. However, Kusanagi ranks in the A tier because she bypasses biological limits entirely. She doesn't have to worry about muscle fatigue, lactic acid buildup, or broken bones. If her arm is crushed, she doesn't need a hospital. She needs a mechanic. It is scientifically robust because it acknowledges the best way to improve the human body is to discard it. Number two is the most realistic vision of future warfare. Profit in the nanosuit from Crisis. This tech beats the cyborgs because it is non-invasive. You don't need to chop off your limbs to use it. You just put it on. The suit's maximum strength mode is based on electroactive polymers, EAPs. These are artificial muscles, materials that contract with massive force when exposed to an electric voltage. We use them today in soft robotics. A suit lined with EAPs would effectively act as a second muscular system, amplifying the wearer's movements without the bulk of hydraulic pistons. The armor itself is equally feasible. The maximum armor mode that hardens on impact relies on sheer thickening fluids. These are non-Newtonian liquids that turn into solids when struck, dispersing the energy of a bullet instantly. Combine this with graphene layering, a material 200 times stronger than steel, and you have a flexible skin that becomes a tank shell in milliseconds. Profit is A-tier because the nanosuit represents the perfect force multiplier. It handles the heavy lifting, the shock absorption, and the environmental protection, while the human inside provides the tactical creativity. It avoids the medical nightmare of rejection and infection because the soldier and the machine remain separate. The only hurdle is power density. Batteries die, but the physics of the suit itself are sound. Number one is the Spartan II program from Halo. Why does Master Chief take the crown over the nano suit? Because while Prophet wears a weapon, the Spartan is the weapon. The UNSC acknowledged a hard truth that keeps the other tiers back. Even with perfect armor, the human body inside is a soft, liquid-filled bag that breaks under high G maneuvers. To fix this, they didn't just build a suit, they rebuilt the pilot to survive. First, carbide ceramic ossification. This procedure coats the skeleton in a high-grade impact shell. This is scientifically plausible material science. We currently use porous titanium and ceramic composites in medical bone grafts because bone tissue naturally grows into the matrix. Unlike the Space Marine, who defies gravity with sheer mass, the Spartan reinforces the existing structure to handle the stress of the armor. Then you have catalytic thyroid implants. This mimics aggressive, localized human growth hormone therapy boosting skeletal density and muscle mass during the critical windows of puberty. It pushes the human frame to its absolute genetic limit without breaking the laws of thermodynamics. But the real engineering marvel, the thing that makes this S tier, is the interface. The Mjolnir armor plugs directly into a neural lace at the base of the skull. In a standard human, reaction time is limited by the speed of electrochemical signals traveling down the spine to the hand. It takes milliseconds. The Spartan interface bypasses the nervous system entirely. The suit reads the firing command from the motor cortex and actuates the armor instantly. The suit moves before the soldier's biological body can even twitch. This eliminates the lag of organic life. In the lore, unaugmented humans who try to wear Mjolnir ended up with shattered bones because the suit moved faster than their bodies could handle. That detail is pure physics. However, this feasibility comes with a dark logistical reality that validates the ranking. The lore states these augmentations only work on subjects with specific genetic markers, and only if applied before adulthood. This aligns with what we know about neuroplasticity and growth plates. You cannot retrofit a 40-year-old recruit. You have to steal a child and mold them. The Spartan II represents the S tier because it treats the soldier as a component in a larger machine. It combines the biological resilience of Geralt, the cybernetic integration of Bucky, and the exoskeleton of Prophet into one cohesive, terrifyingly realistic package. The reality of the super soldier is not a hero born from a bottle of blue serum. It is a product of brutal, iterative engineering. The future of warfare belongs to the side that can successfully merge ceramic bones with neural uplinks and powered exoskeletons. It won't be magic, it'll be math. So tell me, which specific augmentation from this list would you actually risk the surgery for? Leave a comment and make sure to subscribe for more deep dives into the science of fiction.